Thank you for tuning in to the newest episode of the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Soaker. This episode is being released on November 10th, 2022. This week we're talking about voting and why Christians choose how they will vote. Now, I'm not going to try to persuade you to vote a certain way. After all, this episode is being released after the election, and that's somewhat intentional. Because I want us to consider this question as we move forward. What should Christians want from their leaders? As with everything else we discuss on this podcast, we're going to try to see what the Bible says about it and how it applies to this topic that's under consideration. For links to related materials, you can check out the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 111022. Now for our discussion this week. Freedom, justice, assistance, and equality. As this episode is being recorded, today is election day. In Kentucky, we voted on a constitutional amendment that would remove any so-called right to abortion. Now some people are labeled, either by others or by themselves, as single-issue voters. And there is one issue for these people that determines, more than anything else, how they are going to vote for certain candidates or measures. And abortion is often the single issue for a lot of people. And you could certainly make the case that if anything would be a single issue that would determine how a Christian votes, abortion would be it. Yet some Christians are willing to vote for pro-abortion candidates because... They have positions on other issues that they agree with. Is that okay? Well, to answer that question, we really need to get down to this question. What should Christians want from their rulers? So let me state this disclaimer. The purpose of this discussion is not to persuade you how to vote or even to convince you to vote at all. Instead, I believe that as Christians... We need to be very cautious about what we ask for or demand from those who are in positions of civil authorities. So for our discussion today, I just want to focus on what I believe conscientious Christians or other religious people want to see from civil authorities. I'm not considering anyone else who would not fall under that classification. And then when we think about what those individuals might want to see from their leaders, consider each of those from a biblical perspective. So the four things that I've already mentioned at the beginning that I think fall into these categories of what conscientious people want from their rulers are freedom, justice, assistance, and equality. So let's consider each one of these. Number one is freedom. Since the United States was founded, there has been a great emphasis placed upon personal liberty. But what does the Bible have to say about this? In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 4, Paul said, First of all then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and for all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Paul here in these verses is telling Timothy that you are to instruct Christians to pray for leaders, but why? Why does he tell them to pray for those who are in positions of civil authority? for kings and for others who are in these positions, why pray for them? He doesn't say that you pray for them that they might have good health, that they might live a long life or anything like that. Is it necessarily wrong to pray that? No, not necessarily. But what specifically does Paul tell Timothy that he is to teach others to pray in regard to these leaders? Basically, you pray that they'll leave us alone. That we will live a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Well, why would we do this? It's not just because we just want to be left alone. 
But he says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. Well, why would that be the case? Is because, as he says in the next verse, that God wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So you pray that the civil authorities will leave us alone and not hinder our ability to freely serve God, carry out our responsibilities, and spread his word. So we think about what Christians should want from civil authorities. Number one, freedom or personal liberty. Leave us alone and let us live our lives as God has instructed us to. Yes, that is something we should want from those in positions of civil authority. The second idea is that of justice. Generally speaking, people want to see bad guys punished and innocent people protected or avenged if they were the victim of someone's wrongdoing. And God's design was for civil authorities to fulfill this role. Romans 13 verses 3 and 4 says, For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid. For it does not bear the sword for nothing. It is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. So notice in those verses, Paul says that these civil civil authorities, these leaders... They were put in place by God for a reason. They are to punish evildoers and they are to protect the innocent. It is a minister of God as it is carrying out this role. It is doing God's work. So this one is pretty clear cut. Should we want those in positions of authority to protect the innocent and to punish those who do evil as Christians? Yes, this is something that we should want. This is something that we should value because God has said this is their role. This is what he expects them to do. Then that third idea, the idea of assistance. This could come in the form of providing welfare to the poor, forgiveness for student loan debt. We've talked about this in earlier in the podcast about this idea. Some want assistance in the form of universal health care or other types of programs in which the civil authorities provide for the needs and or the wants of people. Now, there is no passage in the scriptures that would indicate that God has given this role to civil authorities. But does that matter? Consider this passage in Acts chapter 12, verses 20 through 23. It says, Now he, referring to Herod, was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. And with one accord they came to him, and having won over Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they were asking for peace, because their country was fed by the king's country. On an appointed day, Herod, having put on his royal apparel, took his seat on the rostrum and began delivering an address to them. The people kept crying out, the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give God the glory and he was eaten by worms and died. When we read this passage, study this passage, we often focus on Herod and his arrogant attitude. And this is why the angel of the Lord struck him, because he did not give God the glory when he was receiving praise. This is the voice of a God and not of a man. But why were the people saying that? Why were the people praising him as a God in the first place? Well, earlier in that passage where we began reading, it said that their country was fed by the king's country. They believed that their livelihood was dependent upon Herod. Many people today believe that their livelihood is dependent upon civil authorities providing for them, whether that's canceling their debts, providing health care for them, providing some sustainable living for them. They think there's no way we can get this unless the civil authorities provide this for us, so we need to make sure that 
they want to do that. We need to do everything that they can to appeal to them and make them want to provide these things for us. Now, granted, there are some people who can't take care of themselves. Now, there are other ways for them to receive help besides government assistance, but we'll set that aside for now. There are some people who cannot take care of themselves, and we understand that. But others simply want assistance. They want, they have this entitlement mentality, and they want to be provided for, even though they could work to provide for themselves, they just want someone else to give these things to them. So though they may not be as explicit in their praise as these ones were to Herod, the attitude is the same. They look to the government to provide for them rather than looking to God and what he provides to us through his providence and the things that he has given in this world if we will work for them and do as he expects us to do. Then the fourth idea, that of equality. Now, this is not the same as justice that we noticed earlier. Justice is about everyone being treated fairly. Equality is about placing everyone at the same level. This typically involves the redistribution of wealth in which the money and or the property of those who are hardworking, prudent, and successful is taken from them and then given to those who are lazy and foolish and unambitious. Now, before you take exception to that, I am not saying that everyone who is in poverty is lazy and foolish and unambitious. But those who do fit that qualification are in that group. And so they are ones who are also receiving this from those who are hardworking, prudent, and successful because these government programs are never based on merit or character. They're simply based on, well, you don't have as much as this person, so here is a handout. Does the Bible say anything that's related to this? Actually, it does. Over in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, beginning in verse 18, it says, Here is what I have seen to be good and fitting, to eat, to drink, enjoy oneself in all one's labor in which he toils under the sun during the few years of his life which God has given him. For this is his reward. Furthermore, as for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, he has also empowered him to eat from them and to receive his reward and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. And then in chapter 6 and verse 1, further on in this context, he says, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun and is prevalent among men. A man to whom God has given riches and wealth and honor so that his soul lacks nothing of all that he desires, yet God has not empowered him to eat from them, for a foreigner enjoys them. This is vanity and a severe affliction. Now, for those who are rich, they are to follow the instructions that Paul gave in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 18, to be rich in good works and generous and ready to share. But Paul told Timothy there that the rich were to be taught to do this or encouraged to do, to do this. That's nothing close to forced confiscation of wealth against their will in order to be taken and then given to someone else. And that passage that we read in Ecclesiastes says that whatever wealth someone has, that's a gift from God. And also when it is taken from them so that they cannot use it and others receive it, that it is vanity and a severe affliction. So the Bible does have something to say about that idea. Justice is something that's important. God has set up civil authorities for that, but equality is something different. Because then it takes the blessings from someone by force and then gives them to someone else. Oftentimes those who have not earned those things or worked for those things. So again, as we bring all of this together, the point of this is not necessarily to convince you to vote a certain way. It's more about encouraging Christians to be cautious about what they expect or demand from their leaders, whether this is expressed by voting, petitioning, or some other way. Be careful about what you expect or demand from civil authorities. 
We need to pray for our leaders. As 1 Timothy chapter 2 talks about, pray for our leaders to leave us alone and allow us to lead a quiet and peaceful life because this is good and acceptable in the sight of God. According to Romans 13, we should want civil authorities to punish evildoers and protect the innocent because that is the role that God has ordained for them. However, when it comes to assistance and equality, number one, God never ordained civil authorities for the purpose of providing those things. And number two, because of the nature of civil government, there is no way that they can even begin to provide assistance or to promote equality without taking money and property and rights or opportunities away from those who have done nothing wrong. So as Christians, we are to help others. Galatians 6 and verse 10 says, So then while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. And we are also to treat others equally and not show partiality. James 2 and verse 9 says, If you show partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. So we are to do good to others. We are to help others. We are to treat others fairly and equally and not show partiality. But the government cannot do that for us. So rather than pushing our responsibility in these ways off onto civil authorities and say, well, that's what I'm going to vote for them to do, or that's what I'm going to petition them to do. No, we need to look at ourselves and see what can I do? Who can I help? Am I treating others fairly and equally? That's what we need to focus on. Not, well, we want the government to do this. Let's pray and hope that the government does what God wants them to do. And then we focus on what he wants us to do. Well, that's all for this week. Thank you for listening to the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I hope you found it to be interesting, informative, and helpful. For relevant links, we haven't talked about those, but there are some links that will be included in the show notes. You can check those out at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 111022. And if you have a moment to rate and review the podcast or share it with others that you think would be interested, that would certainly be appreciated. Also, if you're listening to this episode, remember that we are also uploading video versions of the podcast now to the Plain Bible Teaching YouTube channel. So if you prefer video over audio, then that option is available. And if you see a news story or think of some topic that would make for a good discussion, please email that link to me at andy at plainbibleteaching.com. Thanks again for listening, and I hope to talk to you again next week.